welcome to How to Play Video, HTPV. This is your host, Ryan Sturm, and this podcast is about learning and teaching games. In each episode, I give an explanation of how to play a game, just as if I was sitting across the table from you, and we were about to play the game together. This podcast is intended to be used to learn about a game you may not know much about, learn how to play a game by yourself, or to serve as a model on how to explain the rules of this game or others. This video series is based on my original audio series, of which there are explanations of over 20 great games and special shows, including my primer on teaching games, my countdown of my top 50 games, and much more. Check out all the How to Play episodes from my website, howtoplaypodcast.com, or they're linked from my guild at BoardGameGeek. If you like the show, I hope you'll join and participate in our guild at BoardGameGeek. For more information about all the How to Play podcast episodes, these fabulous how to play teaching guides, and the discussion forums refer to the how to play geek list for which you can find a link at the guild. I can be contacted at the guild on Board Game Geek or directly at my email address, howtoplaypodcast at msn.com. And I want to mention that adding video adds a lot more cost to the show, so I hope you'll consider making a PayPal donation at my website. And I need to say a big thank you to Randall Rasmussen for putting the video for this show together. Now, Let's get to today's episode. How to Play, episode 25. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your host, Ryan Sturm, and today we're going to talk about Hansa Teutonica. I love Hansa Teutonica. The things I like about this is it's a very strategic game that plays in just about an hour. The game moves very quickly. There's very little downtime. Each player's turn might take five or ten seconds. But there's a lot of interaction between the players and a lot of different strategic paths for which to choose from. And there's hardly any luck in the game other than the actions of your opponents. So it's a very good competitive, strategic, and interactive game. This game may not be for everybody. If you're a person who really needs a theme to enjoy a game, an immersive theme, that's not what you're going to get out of this game. This game feels very abstracted. You know, the, the terminology pasted on theme would certainly apply to this game. It's a game about building networks, but other than that, there's very little in the way of theme. So if that's something that is a requisite for you, you may want to steer clear of this game. Also, in playing this game, you're, you're going to have to get in other people's face. You're going to have to block other people. And if that's something that you're trying to avoid in the games that you want, this game may not be for you. Hansa Teutonica was designed by Andreas Stedding. It was released in the year 2009, and it plays with two to five players, though I recommend playing it with three to five players. Complexity rating. Hansa Teutonica is a blue square. There's not a lot of downtime, it has a good length of just about an hour, and the mechanics of the game are quite simple, but there's a lot of different scoring elements, so you're going to have to make sure that your players understand that. But with that being said, it's, it's a game that I think most people can enjoy, even if they're not per se gamers. So I, I think this is a fantastic blue square intermediate complexity game. And if you don't own the game, you're missing out on a picture of one of the most handsome men ever featured on the cover of a board game box. This man is very classy, he's very stylishly dressed, he has excellent golden perm-like hair and exquisite facial hair. And he just happens to be here with me, so I'd like to welcome my co-host for this episode, Wolfgang. Hello, my name is Wolfgang, yeah. Und mein Schnurrbart ist sehr schön. Schnurrbart? Uh, Wolfgang, what's a Schnurrbart? Mein Schnurrbart. Uh, Wolfgang is stroking his mustache. Yes, he, he does have a very fine Schnurrbart, indeed. All right, Wolfgang, are you ready? Ja. Well then, let's get to the hook. Der Haken. Yes, Der Haken. Let's get to Der Haken. Part 1. The Hook. What the game is about. Welcome to Hansa Teutonica. In this game, you are the leader of a merchant guild in Germany with beautiful curly golden locks and excellent facial hair. Mein Schnurrbart. Yes, your Schnurrbart. 
and it is your dream to become the most prestigious trading guild in the Hanseatic League in the late Middle Ages. You will try to do this by completing trade routes connecting two cities. Most trade routes have three or four spaces between them. You will complete trade routes by laying traders, represented by cubes, in every space connecting two of the cities on the board. When you complete a trade route on the board, you'll have one of two scoring options. You will either score them to get a special ability, or you will score them to set up an office in a city, represented by marking the city with one of your cubes. Having an office in a city will allow you to score points when anyone else scores a route attached to that city, give you points for controlling the city, and will help you set up a trade network for victory points at the end of the game. Early in the game, you'll likely be connecting trade routes to gain special abilities that you can use to connect trade routes more efficiently. But as the game progresses, you'll want to shift your focus towards setting up offices to control cities and to score points for a large trading network. At the beginning of the game, you'll have two actions, and for most actions, you'll simply lay a cube or score a trade route. So it is common that your first turn would be to play two cubes, and that your second turn would be to play a cube to complete the trade route, and then score that trade route. The game progresses in this way with players taking actions, mostly by playing cubes onto the board and scoring routes. As players score routes, they will develop their abilities, and then try to set up to score the most points at the end of the game. At the end of the game, points are scored for many categories, but some of the largest chunks are for controlling cities, the size of your network of adjacent offices, and for development of your abilities. No points, however, are awarded for the quality of your facial hair. Keine Punkt für meinen Schnurrbart? No. No points for your mustache. The player with the most points will be the most prestigious guild in the Hanseatic League and be the winner of the game. Part 2. The Meat. How to play the game. Okay, so you know the basic idea. You're connecting these routes in order to get special abilities and to score points. Now it's time to get into the meat of the rules. Das Fleisch! Yes, Das Fleisch. And so we're going to start with looking at what you do on your turn. How to play your turn. Okay, so on your turn you get a certain number of actions. At the beginning of the game this number is two but one of the special abilities is to increase this amount of actions. But you'll start with just two. There are really five different things that you can do with each action. There are two which you're going to do more often and three which you'll do less often. The two which you do more often I'll call major actions, and those are playing a cube and scoring a route. When you play a cube, you are trying to get all the cubes on a route, which can be between two and four spaces. And when you want to add a cube, you can add it anywhere you want on the board. You also have cylinders, which are like your cubes, but they have some special abilities, which we'll talk about in a minute. And this is what you're going to do for a lot of your actions, and probably your first turn will be just to put down two cubes, trying to fill up a route. The second choice for an action is to score a route that you have completed. This counts as an action. So as I said in my example in the hook, very common first two turns would be to play two cubes in your first turn, to play a third cube to finish a route, and then to use your last action of the second turn to score that route. When you score the route, you have to make a choice. You can either claim the office by putting your cube in a city adjacent to that route, or you might be able to get a special ability if you score next to one of the special ability towns. If you want to claim an office, you put one of those cubes into the office and the rest back to your stock. If you choose to get a special ability, then all of those cubes just go back to your stock. The three other actions, which I call minor actions because you do them less often, are refilling your cube supply, displacing other people's cubes, or moving cubes on the board. First, let's talk about refilling your supply. When you start the game, depending on what turn order position you're in, you get five to nine cubes in your supply. It's very important that you have two separate piles when you play this game. You have a pile of cubes that are active to you and cubes that you can use, and other cubes in your stock, which you can get, but you can't use them until you move them into your supply. 
which is what this refill action does. So you should have your supply clearly in front of you and your stock a little farther away within arm's reach for you to refill with. So your first few turns you're going to be playing these cubes and eventually you're going to run out. So you're going to have to use an action to refill your cube supply. So you use one of your actions and to begin with your refill ability is three cubes. So you can spend one action to get three cubes from the stock and place them in your active supply. Now remember those cylinders? You can choose to refill those cylinders just like they were cubes. The next possible action is displacing cubes. Now you're trying to fill a route with all of your cubes. Inevitably, some jerk is going to place a cube in your way in the route that you're trying to score. What are you going to do about that? Well, one thing you can do about it is displace it. You can kick him out of there, but you have to do so at a cost. You can play your cube and replace your opponent's cube, but you have to pay one cube from your supply into your stock to do that. And the jerk who got in your way is going to get a little bonus. He gets to replay his cube on an adjacent route, and he gets a freebie cube, and not from his active supply, but from the stock. So how does this work? I want to take over a cube where my opponent got in the way. So I put one of my active cubes on the section where he is. I hand him his cube back. I have to pay another cube into my stock. Then my opponent is happy and giggles like a German schoolboy. <laughs> ich hat zwei Würfel, ja. Yes, Wolfgang, you get two cubes. He gets the one I took off the board, and he has to play it on an adjacent route, and he gets a free one from his stock, not his active supply. And remember those cylinders? Here's where their special ability comes into play. These guys are extra hard to displace. If you want to kick out one of these cylinders, you have to pay two cubes into your stock, and your opponent gets two free cubes to lay from his stock. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, Wolfgang, you get three cubes. So I play one on the cylinder. I have to burn two cubes into my stock from my supply into my stock. My opponent gets to move the cylinder and gets two free cubes from his stock to play on one of those adjacent routes. He can't just play it anywhere. It must be on an adjacent route. So displacing comes at a penalty. So that's one way to deal with people getting in your way. The other way to deal with it is to simply move your cubes, which is the fifth action. At the beginning of the game, you have the ability to pick up two cubes on the board and move them to different spots. You have to move them to empty spots. But this is another way to handle it if people are just getting in your way. So you have two actions on your turn, and you have five different choices with which to use those actions. Mainly, you're going to play cubes, or you're going to score routes. But you can also refill your supply, displace an opponent's cube at a cost, or move a couple of your cubes on the board. So the first few turns you'll probably be laying a few cubes, then maybe scoring a route, and then you may run out of cubes, so you'll have to refill, play some more cubes, maybe you'll have an opponent get in your way, so you have to displace it, and then you'll have a route full, so you can score that route, and the game continues in this way.